We talk about this and talk about that. Shut up, stop running out, let's talk about facts. Live a little, laugh a lot, let's have some fun. Listen to Gina, she'll tell you how it's done. Did you know? Good to know. What did you know? Well, now you know. Never know what's gonna happen on the No Filter Show. Loud and proud, funny and cool. Say what you're thinking, that's her only rule. The No Filter Show is brought to you by Boost Academy. Boost Academy is a smart school that prepares children, grades 4 through 12, for the modern world. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the No Filter Show with me, Gina Knowles. Today, we're talking about Hurricane Dorian and how it hit and slammed my Bahama land, especially the islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama. You know, we say that it's, uh, we're not even calling it a category five hurricane, but a category six on how extreme it was. And um, I have been in the trenches and dealing with hurricane relief, as you all know, as a part of Head Nolds. That's one thing we do is we're always the first responders and always get fully involved when it comes to any sort of crisis and disasters. So I have on the show today uh, two of the evacuees, Cleopas Taylor and Cindy Johnson, and they're going to share their story. But I also want to let you know the story of Head Knowles on what was going on when we saw the hurricane that started. And um, we started, of course, preparing and getting ready for what was going to happen as it hit. Um, of course, we, Paul Arana, as usual, comes to the rescue with his planes, and we had our guys, as soon as we were able to get out, they were on the planes, my husband being one of them, and uh, even though he is one who always is uh, willing to give his heart, I think that honestly he went because he knew that I was going to go. And we got a team together, uh, the original Head Knowles crew who always goes first, uh, and they're not scared to go live in the bush or what they're going to see and who they're going to help and we knew that after the Paul did a flyby to see what airports needed to be cleared so planes could start landing the first original original crew that went Andrew and Toby and Neil and them and Dalen and uh, the ones who always helped from uh, Joaquin from back then five years ago so they went and they started clearing up the airport roads and as well as the plan wasn't originally for them to sleep but that's what ended up happening and when we got the flight schedule uh, going where we just had the planes going around in circles around and around they went and they found a place where they could store stuff and what we did was each plane went filled with supplies and water and food and as much relief as possible and we started taking people from the clinic uh, the clinic was only you know it's only up the street thank god in marsh harbor we got everybody out of the clinic and then we started moving on to the women and children and we even had the fastest food to send was pizza so we started doing that and then alive so generously started donating uh, boats with fast ferries so they paid for the fuel and the boat started going over to collect more people because we know there's only so much that could fit on the plane. The boats were bringing up to 200 to 250 people each night. They would leave here at 11 p.m. and arrive at 8 a.m. We even put uh, the Head Knowles team chefs on the boat and it was so exciting because by the time the boat pulled up to the dock, they had a fresh hot meal waiting for them. And then they also had the teams there with the laptops, so we logged them all in as they were coming in so we'll know where they're going to stay. And we'd like to thank uh, teams that are working with us, with Bria, Ashley Brown, Heather Peterson, who are real estate agents. And let me tell you something, we're getting everybody into housing, and without these certain teams that are helping us, we could not have done it. And we also have um, the bar team who's helping out with all the animals, Hands for Hunger who's dealing with all the food and the shelters, and there's just a lot going on. Presently, we are looking, we have a building that we looked at like 15 different buildings to try to get in to get a proper 
distribution center and as I'm sure 90% of you know that we are at uh, the Old Fields and Gladstone and so we have stuff coming in there and then we will also have our centers and our tents set up actually on the ground. We've had people that have gone to both Abaco throughout the Keys and we, we have teams who are sending us lists on their needs and necessities and then we're going to have our distribution center set up because we know this is not a sprint but now a marathon. The sprint was to get the people out and now it's a marathon. We're working closely with NEMA as well as the, go as the government and we are trying to all work as one team to better our nation and to get our country back in order. We're very thankful for everybody from around the world, all the NGOs, all the partners. Let me tell you something, the, the outpouring help that we've been getting, we appreciate so much and the donations that are coming in. And please continue to send because we need it. We have 70,000 people who have been affected. We still have shelters, uh, up to 3,000 people in one shelter. And we have to make sure that these people have three meals a day, clothes in the back. The clothes have to get washed. And now people are trying to get back into their homes to rebuild. So we still need tools, building supplies. We have, you know, it's unfortunate because we still don't know how many people are missing, how many people have lost their lives. So they're going to have to go through the debris individually by hand to make sure that we don't want anybody, you know, to get hurt. And we know how particular we are as a people when it comes to seeing, you know, we need to see to believe it. But to describe it best, I could tell you, I've been on the ground myself and it, it looks as if an atomic bomb went off. And people who I've met from all over the world, um, Israel, Jerusalem, Maine, um, down from to England, Puerto Rico, they have been to Haiti for the earthquake, they've been to the tsunamis, and they've said this is the worst devastation they've seen. Yes, we may be small, and they, you can't look at the ratio of people, however, it has been the worst they have seen. So please know that we will continue to need help. Don't forget about us, because we are small, but we are strong, and we are not too prideful to say that we need the help. You can go to our Head Knowles Foundation page on Facebook. We also have our website, headknowlesfoundation.org, to find out. We keep updates there, as well as how you can donate through the Together Be Alive um, page. And our accounts are there, and we always let people know our needs at this time. Especially, I have to say thank you to Tropics. Uh, who's been the shipping company, shipping everything from the States for us, and all of our local companies who, as we've reached out and we said we need help and they've been here to support, it's just been fantastic. And one thing I could say is, Bahamians, we pull together in a time of crisis and needs. And those are who are in Nassau, remember, we always need volunteers to help us because there's a lot of work to do. And many hands makes light work. So we'll be back, and um, remember coming up, we have two of our evacuees from Africa. Rule. The No Filter Show is proudly sponsored by Another Production, BAF Financial and Insurance, Battery and Tire Alignment Specialist, Bliss Wax Boutique, Checkers Cafe, Dairy Queen, Live to Fish, Mesa Grill, Milo Butler and Sons, Pop Star Entertainment, Oasis Shopping, Boost Academy, Island Game, and Quality Home Center. Hi everybody, good afternoon. My name is Mitsunori Chikawa. Welcome to Latitel Restaurant. Today, we prepare a machi jalapeño tiradito. On my dishes, I try to, to mix different flavors in each hamachi slices. Here we are, okay? So, this is hamachi spicy jalapeno. Welcome. Why you want 
catch a fish today? Another one, baby? Another one. We already found some fish, but we're gonna find some more. Plan the best day of your life today. Check us out at www.live2.fish or on Facebook, Instagram, and TripAdvisor. Email us at info at live2.fish. This segment is brought to you by Mesa Grill. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show. And I have here with me today Mr. Cleopas Taylor, who is an evacuee from Abaco. And... I have known him probably ooh, 40 years, <laughs> showing our age. Yeah, well, and um, so his story is very interesting. And I brought him on because of the fact that he didn't realize that I was part of Head Knowles. So he called me and he was like, Gina, you're Head Knowles? What's happening? So I want you to hear his story. He was there during the storm, very, very emotional. And um, just want to hear it from the horse's mouth and what happened. So, Lofi, tell me from start to finish your story. Why, well, Gina, first of all, I'd like to give thanks to Almighty God for sparing our lives. Not just me and my family, but the whole of Abaco community as a whole, as a body and a unit. And it was a devastating situation to go through. I mean, from start to finish, it was like almost next to, like things was never gonna end. It wasn't gonna be no hope. The severity of the situation, I think is highly underplayed and the serious nature of the repercussions and the aftermath and the people in their situation and their displacement is, I mean, Right now, I feel like it's still unfair that we still don't have resolutions or answers to questions that as pertinent to families and their future and their progress in the, after the situation. And I'm uh, basically what I could tell you from my account, from the storm started, from Dorian started in Abaco, it was a total nightmare. The hell wind and rain to the magnitude to make your soul just quiver. And I'm a single parent, was home alone at the time with two kids, and trying to put up my best to fend for my family and secure my property. And even the, even the fact that all you did was the best you could do, it still wasn't good enough. Cause after Matt told the whole story and tell the day there's no change after the situation. Everything is just, you don't even know if it was a war zone or if it was an actual real storm pass through. You understand? And like I say again, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I don't think many of us would have still made it. And we lost a, bu we lot of, we lost a lot of good friends, comrades, and there was a lot of Bad things come in the storm. And when you were in your house, and was it where the water started coming up? Well, fortunately for me, I was in the area in Central Pines, and the water level didn't um, succeed or compromise our buildings as much. But it was more like the rain and debris and wind. stuff went, yes. The wind and the rain and debris, that was one of the major things in Central Pines, the area where I live. But the people in Marsh Harbor and Lower Dundas and Murphy Town on the front road, which is the Bay Street area, mm -hmm. front road area, that was pure desolation. I mean, the sea came up and destroyed massive buildings, strong, sturdy structures, concrete buildings, cars just destroyed. Um, Boats, boats get pushed out of the ports from out of dockage areas and inland 
I mean, if you've ever been to Marshall before, and you could see pictures of Marshall before, and you see pictures now. It's like it's people say that they can't, you can't even recognize no. the street. Right now, I tell you people having a hard time just dealing with this. I'm telling you, because as simple as me talking about it, it's been, been just but a month. And I talk to you, my eyes still full of tears for the hurt, for the joy that we out of the situation. But then, still at the same time, for the people who didn't make it and the people who lost loved ones in this, and there's nothing you could do or say to replace that. Life. Mm -hmm. Right. But at the same time, like <clears throat> material things, we know we could always rebuild and we know. Abago people strong. And together, united they stand, they can make big things happen. And it's just all up to the um, powers vested to be, to give okay for certain things to move forward and progress in Berlin. And at the same time, if nothing, if I, I don't think if, if nothing's being said to these people to like sell their nerves and let them know where they would be redirected or how they would be assisted in housing and working. Because these people are mainly independent people. They don't ask nobody for nothing. And they're always a close-knit community, but always pulled together. So they don't know nothing about displacement or not to be living in a normal situation, which we call normal. To be home, school, work at certain times, and you have a normal routine to go through, right? Mm -hmm. And over here, this displacement and this abnormalcy. It's, okay, it's let's put a pin in that thought. We're going to take a quick commercial break and I'm going to come back and tell you, find out the rest of the story. Boost Educational Services presents Boost Academy, a boutique smart school that prepares children in grades 4 through 12 for the modern world. Students will be held to international standards in their core subjects while also engaging in individualized learning pathways that play to their unique strengths and interests. Boost maintains a student-staff ratio of 1 to 8 and provides after-school clubs, classes, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and social-emotional counseling support at no additional cost. Furthermore, students will enjoy weekly PE and swimming at Evolve Functional Fitness. Stepping away from the traditional model, Boost Academy aims to prepare your child for world citizenship by tackling topics such as human rights, the Constitution, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship. If you're a parent with uncompromising standards for education and you're seeking a holistic educational program, please reach out. Find us on the web at www.boostbahamas.com or email info at boostbahamas.com. Here's to all the early morning breakfasts. To the last minute surprises and a new friend for life. The year the sparks flew and we said, I do. Here's to the biggest table on the street when family and friends come together. Milo Butt, your neighborhood store of family tradition. This segment is brought to you by Battery and Tire Alignment Specialists. Hi everybody, we're back with the No Filter Show with me, Gita Knowles, and we're continuing the conversation with Cleophas Taylor from Abaco and Evacui, who was there during the storm. And so we've already asked him, you know, he started saying his story, but Cleophas, I want to know what happened, what made you leave the house, and when you left the house, and... Uh, you know, what happened after that? That was when the eye came. When the eye came, it was like a total relief, but at the same time, me within myself, I knew that the, hurt, the storm wasn't finished. And there were people on the streets trying to relocate, trying to get out of 
a bad situation and to try to look for higher ground. And there were women, there were kids, there were families, just people on the road trying to get to security or trying to get someplace where they could get out of the weather. And I wouldn't even say, but 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, it was total carnage again. And that, as everybody knows, the tail of the storm is the most strongest part of the storm. And I saw people outside walking around. They were, they were like, they were, they were in their normal self. You understand? Because they were distraught and they were confused and looking for help, but there was nobody there to say, um, come this place, there you could find shelter and this is what's going on. Now, granted, they had shelters in place, but in the, in the confusion, and without communication, no power. You got street light, you got poles down, you got lines all over the place, and the water was, the water was at a crazy level, inland. You understand? So, so you had to swim with your two kids? Certain points, you had to walk in water, like almost up to your chest, just to get certain places where you could look for a little safety. And the area, if, I don't know if you know about Central Pines Plaza where teachers and salary unionists. I don't know how it well enough. Okay, well that's the newest, that's one of the newer, the newer um, buildings around there. And they were totally, they were totally incapacitated by water. And people, people were traveling by boats to get out the small corners, to get out to higher ground. <sighs> it's a mess. After I seen the situation and severity of it, we had to go to the government complex to see if we could find a resolution to um, the questions. Where do you go for extraction? Is there going to be extraction? Uh, where do we go to get to find water, food, or some means of shelter? I have an asthmatic daughter, and I know it only take a matter of days before the mole and stuff and everything else was to set in and was given a real health hazard. And I only had one option besides the clinic, because the clinic was over park to facilitate all the people who was there. The government complex was a mess. The airport was the only place I needed to get, because I needed to get off this island. Every, as everybody else did it too, mm -hmm. understand? And I don't put myself before nobody else. But that's when the state of survival had to kick in. I mean, like whatever it costs, whatever it takes, whatever I need to do to get my child off this island, to get my family into safety. Every man, every woman, every child, every parent, everybody was thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And. It come to a point where when we got into the airport, we was told it was no more flights for the day. So now, who do you speak to? Who do you ask for? When are we gonna be taking out the situation or when is somebody coming to speak to us and whatever the case may be? And there was this, there was this lady who came in the foyer area of the airport where we were staying at the time. Mind you, we was in the airport two days in the night. Thanks to a family who opened the door for us and they seen our plight and they let us in because it was really room for, for one or two more. Mm -hmm. But um, this lady came through and she's, uh, she asked if anybody needed anything, medical assistance, anybody needed any water, any food, any sustenance. And the way they came about and asked and inquired, it was like, it wasn't a job they was doing. They was asked because they was highly concerned. And again, another young man came through and I noticed he was wearing the same shirt as the lady before who asked if he wanted some water and stuff. And I asked, I said, man, I need something. And he was like, what do you need? I said, man, I need a plane to get out of here. If y'all could get us on the next flight out of here, I'd be much obliged. But they couldn't work as easy as that. There was a lot of injured people, elderly people, women and kids, and one like me, I'd rather sit down and I could take it. I could go to take a little bit more than what right, they could you take. Could handle it. Mm -hmm. So 
it's, it's all fair that they go first. I have no problem with that. And once they promised us that we would have been able to get on the plane to get out, I felt a little bit more security about something was going to happen and we wasn't going to be in the situation for much longer. As time went on, there were one or two fellas who came and they would keep checking up on people and keep checking on people and I'm one, they persisted. I need answers to questions. And they took the time out and they talked to us and not just me, plenty of others. And they made us they made us feel a sense of security. And who are these fellas? <laughs> Do you know? I learned who these people was when they came to Nassau. The second day in the Nassau, I was staying at a shelter for a minute and I started asking the people around, how did they get over here and who did they come to? And, and everybody came, who I spoke to came to Odyssey and they were like, they came ahead. And once I say, well, who in the world is head? No, I say, see, because they were the people them, who helped us in Abaco. They assisted me. They had a daughter come to me, a medic come to me, and check my daughter out because she's highly asthmatic mm -hmm. and she had no um, medication on hand. Because, like I tell you, where things happen so fast and transgress so fast, when you had to go, you just had to grab whatever you could grab and go. Right. And when they checked out, and they cleared her and said that, all right, she's all right for now, but she cannot be in this situation because, like I say, there was no power and there's no, right. and there's a lot of people going through and the sanitary, sanitation was a problem and mm -hmm. you're right. And there was this guy on the airport because I really take note of things about what's going on around me. And I noticed this guy on the airport, he had his headset on, he had a walkie-talkie in his hand, and I noticed every time planes land, he was putting his, he was using his walkie-talkie. So I put it together that he was directing traffic. Because there was no tower. There was no tower. There was no communication. There was no order. If he had, if he had knows was in there at that point in time, and assisted us and many other people, I didn't know what it would have been like today. I'm dead serious. So I'm much appreciative to you and Head Knowles and to whoever else give us a hand in this process, not just me, like I always say, for everybody, the whole Abaco body, we appreciate your help and God bless you all. And don't worry, we'll continue to help and starting the new phase. And like I told you, we want to get into helping other people with rebuilding. And um, I know you want to get back and you want to start because it's fortunate that you're in construction and you know how to handle it so you could do your own house so i know a lot of guys who are going back to their own house mm -hmm. and i know that you told me that the one thing that you need to go back is a generator mm -hmm. and i'm letting you know that i'm going to give you that generator today all right so you can take it back and you can start your life mm -hmm. and start getting your house back in order and we hope that i'm sure i'm going to see you because we're setting up a, setting up a tent up on the by the airport so i'm sure i'll see a lot of you because i need to have my team over there too who I know and trust and you can tell me who, where, what. Uh, but Theophilus, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. And you know that I'm a text away, whatever you need. You needed a dog. Yeah, yeah. Head knows find my dog. <laughs> they got the craziest dog man in the world. Yes. He went over there and he got he got my pit bull back. I mean I mean that was that was a that was a little boost to my family as well. Yep. Because that's my daughter's me. dog, and he yeah. He said he needs his dog. I called Bark, and Valentino was on the ground. He was like, "This dog is bite." <laughs> but he went right there and he got the dog. Thank you so much, and I love you, and we're here for you. And just let us know what you need, and may God be with you. And I'm text away. Thank you. Yes, bye. from when you enter your one-stop department store with so much niceness friendly staff great atmosphere low prices they got brand name appliances furniture hardware electronics home decor toys and apparel shop and save there's no need to go away stay at home and save big stop and shop at the quality home center home center spend less and live better with Trio, you can get everything. 
and more, like our phone. You get features like caller ID, call waiting, call forwarding, and a bunch of others like <clears throat> virtual number. So you can now call friends and family abroad as a local call, all for free. Just call 601-2200 and tell them that you want Trio TV, phone, internet for $99. Powered by Rev. You and us together. This segment is brought to you by Milo Butler and Sons. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show. And today, as I was saying, we're discussing Hurricane Dorian. As you know, how much I'm involved in hurricane relief. And I had the privilege to get very close with a particular family. Her name is Cindy Johnson, and she's here with me today. Now, special story about Cindy is she happened to be in Nassau. She left in Nassau to come to Nassau on September 1st, I think it was? Came on the 29th. Oh, she came on the 29th. Yeah. So first of all, we'd like to welcome Cindy. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Welcome. And um, her story, I really thought that it was special because she told me that she felt as if it was a calling from God that she needed to come to Nassau. And she came to buy school supplies, even to the point when she knew that the kids were probably going to miss the first week of school. So I want you to hear her story because it's so special. And I... I it really touched my heart, so I said, I, I have to get on the show to share it with all of you. So, Cindy, let me know about your story, because I know that you were here with your family, and you were told you told me that originally only you and one of your daughters, your four my kids, oldest daughter, yes. was going to come. Children. Five children. Five yeah. children. And then, bit by bit, you started just magically, this money was appearing to get another ticket and another ticket, and That's you even right. up to buying your husband his ticket the day before. My son's ticket. His son's ticket. The day before. The day before. Right. And um, then you were down here, the hurricane was hitting, and you literally were getting phone calls from your neighbors. Tell me about this. Well, I'd, um, I was supposed to come on the 29th, me and my oldest daughter. And we went on the beach, I think about two weeks before that, and something just hit me. And I asked the kids, they said, you all want to go? And I saw all of us. My husband was like, okay, baby, you know we don't want the funds. So we can't carry everybody, but I just felt the urgency. So what I started doing behind his back, every time I do a client or two, I would send for a ticket like that. And then when I bought about three tickets, I told him, I said, okay, we going. We need a vacation. We got to go. He's like, vacation school open. And I said, I don't know, but we just got to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, up to the day before we left, I had already purchased my son ticket. We got the townhouse, a, a rental that came in the townhouse and everything in a short space of time. I started telling my clients, we're going on a little vacation, so I won't be in. And um, not knowing that that would be the last time I would come back home. Um, we were in the town, I was on vacation, and I got a call from my neighbor, Cindy, we're going to drown. And she said, um, please try call someone. She was trying to call out, she couldn't get out. The corner was literally to an extent where her kids could have drowned. Um, we had just bought a boat and they had swum over to the house and they found some life vests on the boat. Now they were trying to get in the house to get the keys but it was so filled with water like he literally almost drowned trying to find the keys. It was like so difficult because it was so much water they couldn't find it and it was like one devastating call after another. Um, you know because they couldn't reach out. They couldn't reach no one there. So if they call a number, like where I wasn't there, they was able to reach out to me because my phone wasn't down. Right. Oh my God, it was horrible. What was meant to be a vacation turned into a nightmare. And then I got a call, Cindy, don't come back home because there's nothing left. The house was gone. Everything was gone. And what was so amazing, two weeks before, my daughter, we usually worship before I start work. And she was worshiping. I was still asleep. I slept late that morning. And she came into the room and she said, in the voice of God, she was like, Satan, you will not have this family. This family belongs to me. And she started speaking as if it was God's voice. He said, you will not kill them. Nothing will happen to them. And I, I didn't understand nothing what was going on. And she said, God said to anoint, to wash the boat in water for three days, fresh water. And coming home from church on the third day, it was like 10 o'clock that night. My husband said, baby, I still can um, wash this boat. And he washed the boat. A few days after, we ran away. And everything, everything was destroyed. 
accept the boat. Amazing. Accept the boat. That is crazy. And so your neighbors, I know that you all got pictures of your house and how devastating it was. And um, we're going to put up some pictures to show everybody that it was, I mean, you could look at the pictures completely, absolutely, the roof is gone. I mean, everything is, it's just crazy. Which part of Abaco do you live in? Dundastown. In Dundastown. And I know that you said that you have friends who've lost their lives and loved ones as well. And um, I know you showed me some pictures. I will not show the pictures, but the bodies of people floating in the water. And um, it was really, I mean, absolutely horrific. And how, how many of them do you know got out of your friends, your neighbors or whatnot? My neighbors were able to get out because, you know, like I said, there was some life vests on the, um, on the boat. So they were able to, her husband was able to retrieve them and they were able to get out and go and, you know. And, and they explained, because I know you showed me a picture of when the water was rising before the storm had yeah, even started. Yeah, she showed me a picture of the hose just before. And she was like, boy, so you can send in, look, I can be nothing left. And then afterwards they got out and everything was clear. And she was like, that's it. The whole corner gone. Oh my, so now your plan is, you told me that um, you're now moving to Luther today. Yes, ma'am. And so uh, your plan is to start a new life in Luther? Yes. And the kids are going to go to school and you're going to start work there? Yes. And you're not going back to Abaco? Um, I don't see it right now. I don't I know, see it, right uh, now. it Because, I mean, the, in a way, this is the thing. Unless you uh, let them finish dealing with, I think, the uh, moving the debris and dealing with bodies and whatnot and let everybody, de and then you determine you know, if you're gonna go back and all that, but because you have the opportunity, because right now people are spread out throughout all of the islands. Yes. And I think that it's really good out of Bahamians are coming together and offering. And um, so, of course, you know that, well, we, we say we knew best friends. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know that we're here at Head Knowles and I know you've been down and we've given you stuff and we right. try to help you try start your new life. So, Cindy, do you have anything that you'd like to say to our nation before we go, you go back and you start your new life. What would you like to say? Look right in that camera and tell them. I just would like to say to everyone of Freeport and Abaco and the entire Bahamas, it has been rough. And a lot of people have been saying things because they've never really been, you know, where we're at now. I moved from Nassau to start a life in Abaco. And, you know, I was expecting that to be it. But God has the final say. And we never know when it would happen to us. So I make a plea today, please be as compassionate as you can. Even though, you know, you're, you're, you've been through it, Abaco and Freeport, in the storm and through the storm, still be there for one another. There are persons that are consoling us, but no one could console you like someone that's been through it. Try to be there for someone that's not as strong as you are. We are our brother's keeper. And I encourage you to continue doing that Bahamas. Be there for one another. Very strong, powerful words. I totally agree. So thank you so much for coming. And you know, I'm here. If you need me, wait a text away. You know I answer. I'm very reachable. Mm -hmm. All right. And I love you. And trust me, the same way God has brought you this far, he'll continue to take you. All right, darling. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the No Filter Show. And I hope you enjoyed watching and learning about uh, from the first-hand experiences of Hurricane Dorian and, and letting you know once again it has been a lot and um, I feel as if I you know I, I, I literally left the warehouse to come here to hurry up put this on to look clean and look not tired but it's this ongoing at any point if you want to call our head notes hotlines please dial 817-GIVE, that's 4483. So 817-4483. And you can check us out on our Facebook page, the Head Knowles Foundation page, as well as email us at info at headknowlesfoundation.org. Thank you so much for everything, and Bahamas Strong. Promotional consideration provided by Oasis Shopping and Quality Home Center.